guys, welcome. What's going on? I'm um, Yao. I'm Jed, and this is our lifestyle channel where we talk about everything yes. and anything. Um, all right, how are you doing? Uh, I mean, I'm doing well, but the temperature of the world is a little off, so I want to come to you guys and talk about the mental state of, uh, of us yeah. and where we're at right now. Right. Um, so this particular video was inspired, I would say, by the recent um, killing of George Floyd, right? Yeah. And um, Ahmed Arbery, and the many black lives that have been lost in the last decade, century. Murder. Like, you Murder. know, just, yeah. and honestly, we are at a state where when we hear of another killing of, um, of a black man or a black woman or a black child, we need to process how we're doing and how we're feeling as a community, as a group. And that's something we don't do. It's something that we don't really talk about as much. Um, and that is what this video is about. Okay. So when i found out about the recent um killing of george floyd i was actually at work and the video surfaced on my instagram feed and i had to hold back because then that is my coping mechanism i and it's unfortunate because i i had to numb myself from that reality in order to survive in my space of work which should not be the case with it it shouldn't right it, but it honestly is because then it mm -hmm. opens um it kind of warns of other um personal um scenarios or personal situations that i found myself in being um profiled as a black woman or being in a situation where my brother has been profiled you know right in front of me um and so it leads to those moments and i do not want to relive them and so I, I tend to just numb myself from that reality, which is not fair, which is not right, which is not dealing with the situation. And so Yao and I talked about it and we're like, how are other people coping with this? Right. You know, yeah, you have people reposting these issues, reposting the videos, but how are we as individuals, as black people, as brown people, how are we really dealing with it at home, like amongst our friends or family? Are we discussing this? Uh, to the level where it needs to be addressed, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like she said, um, these things happen way too often. And for me, I'm more of a reactor. So when I hear these things, I want to react. And that's me, I want the solutions. So I always go to how can we remedy this? And what it boils down to me is just power. If we had power, then these powerless things would not be happening to us. So uh, how do we take power back, right? How do, we, how do we have power back with ourselves? And I think it starts with us. We've been miseducated. So we have to educate ourselves that we're, uh, we don't need others to be powerful. We need ourselves. So building our communities back up. And let's be honest, if we had a community that was all looked like us, we had police that looked like us, we had law officers and lawyers and judges that look like us, a lot of these scenarios wouldn't be happening. So my thing is, is like, what mental state are you in now? Having a someone to have a conversation with, um, having friends to talk to, having a space to where you don't have people judging you for speaking your mind or speaking how you really feel because everyone copes differently, right? Yeah. If you're someone that is taken back or if you're someone that is going forward there needs to be a safe space for us to do it so that's really what we want to talk about here and, and what is your mental space you know who do you have to talk to uh when these things happen because honestly it could be me it could have been my brother it, it could have be been my her. brother yeah. it could have been anybody so uh we just heard of uh, another uh woman that just got shot um 13 times in her own home and uh, a warrant was issued, but it was for another person, her neighbor, and she was an EMT. Uh, her name escapes me right now, but it's just it's just so many people, one after the other, and it's been going on not just for decades, not just for centuries, but 
uh, for, I would even say millennia, man. It's, yeah. it's been going on it's, for a long time. So That is part of the history of this country. Right. Um, I was having a conversation with you earlier about how sharing our personal experience with um, police racial profiling or police brutality can maybe make a change. I honestly don't know if it would make a change, but I think when you know someone personally that has been affected directly by um, similar situation, you have a different way of approaching it. You have a different way of thinking about it. Cause I mean, as, a, as we talked about earlier, I don't think it is my job to educate my non-white friends or my non-white co-workers on, you know, on these matters. It really isn't because the, the information is out there, you know, but then there are people that I know in my very own circle that haven't shared any of this, um, you know, postings or haven't brought up this topic or you know, haven't liked, um, you know, posts about these things that are bluntly in your face. And it's not my job or my duty to bring those matters to them because I think it's available and we cannot just pretend, you know, this isn't an issue. Um, but I also think that, oh, I like to believe that if they knew what I personally or what my brother personally or what y'all personally has, experience in the hands of um you know the police policing system or by or just by mere um you know experience of racial profiling then maybe their approach to it or the understanding of it will be different okay so i'm gonna share i'll, I'll share two right two particular um, scenarios that change my entire um relationship with the law enforcement with the law enforcement so with the law enforcement um and even the thought of it like shakes my inner core right um so one particular scenario um this was in 2000 and 2008 and then my then boyfriend um was uh, a white american and um, I lived in Staten Island, New York at then. My brother, who was 17, who was 16 at then, was driving um, our car, because we shared a car. And we had parked by a city bank, because I had to go to the bank to get money. We were gonna go get food. And I had walked into the bank. It was closed the night, so I walked to the ATM portion of the bank. And all of a sudden we saw these two black vans, right? Come surround us. And there were these cops or undercover cops because they, they didn't have like the cop uniform. uniforms on, right? So they just came out and there were two men with guns pulled at my brother while he was in the car, right? And then asking him to come out. So I see this from inside the, um, the ATM portion of the bank. And so I ran out and John, who was my um, boyfriend, and then um, was asked to come out of the car. And meanwhile, these two guys had the guns pointed at my brother. And John was like 10 or 11 years older than my brother. Okay. John is Caucasian. Okay. So they pull John to the side and I'm walking towards because I see these people like, like around our car and around my brother. So I'm freaking out. <laughs> And I was like, what's going on? And then they turned towards me and they're like, have your hands up, right? I'm like, what is going on? I need to know what's happening. And they're like, oh, this car looks like a stolen car. And they asked who the car belonged to. And so we're telling them that it belongs to my brother and I. It's a gift from my mother. And then this is like, you know, the title is in the car. Like we're given names, addresses. And then this is what they asked John. I swear to you, they asked John. Who's the who's her boyfriend? We'll just start Caucasian. They asked John, they asked John, do you feel safe? Are you okay? And John looks at him and he was like, what is going on? John was in the military, so John has an ID on him. 
and they pulled Jones aside and they literally pat me down. And Jones like, okay, what is going on? This is not right. We need explanation. We need answers. They literally pat me down. They're like, oh, um, we saw an unusual activity in this neighborhood. And so we came to investigate and they kept on asking them, do you feel okay? Are you safe? Like, and Jones like, these are my family. Like I'm hanging out with them. I know these people, like what is going on? And you're like, oh, okay, sorry. It must be the wrong neighborhood. Meanwhile, you pulled a gun at a 16-year-old. Thank goodness my mother has set us down and talked to us about what Black reality is in America. in America. So my brother knew not to move his hand from the steering wheel. This is a parked car. That just... And so John had to like literally... He kept to like apologize after these people went left and was like, I'm sorry, but this is, this is what you know this is america this is america and we had just moved to the u.s like less than three years from that experience okay and the other scenario was um a situation was my brother again and i in a car parked in front of our um home and we had two police officers like police cars parked right next to us um and then one comes out and one is like who does this car belong to this car is this car was reported a similar car was reported stolen again right and my brother's like no this is my car like this is like the document whatever and then he was like oh no this car and i told you this this car looks too nice to belong to a kid like you i swear to you i swear on my grandmother's grave those words stuck to me up to date what do you do after that you know, and every time I hear scenarios like this, I imagine that happening to my brother because my brother is a young, um, tall, uh, black man. Okay. No one cares like your background. They don't care your education. They don't care how much money you have in the bank. All people see is, is your skin color. And that in itself has seemed to be your um, your downfall, which should not be a reality, but it's a reality. So this is why every time I see these, this police brutality and racial profiling, it's hard to watch these videos, I won't lie to you. Yeah, I mean, it is hard for me to watch It's not even police videos. brutality, it's police murder. But that's how I, can numb myself from it and it's not because i don't want to talk about it it's because we deal with it every day we do yeah, sometimes I mean, a minuscule um you know scenarios but we deal with it every day yeah but I, is anyone talking about our mental state because then if you've been exposed to this much hate, this much um, mistreatment, this much inequality and injustice for so long, it affects your psyche to a point. I mean, I like to believe that I'm okay, but don't get it wrong. Whenever I get stopped by a cop for any reason, oh, I'm, I'm scared. Like I know I may have not done I may have not have done anything wrong or maybe made a wrong turn or maybe you know was speeding, right? Yeah. But I still I overlook that small aspect of why I'm being stopped. And I don't care if it's a white cup or a black cup, honestly. I just shake and I'm scared. And I usually immediately call someone. I see that my mom is on the speakerphone, my husband is on the speakerphone, or my brother is on the speakerphone. Because I don't, I'm, I just, I don't have enough words, but I just, I'm scared. Should I be? Do you think I should be? That's our reality, though. And that's how I just feel. And I don't know how we can get about it, but I understand, yeah, like having power can change things. But it is an institutional issue. And it's taken many years to create, or many centuries really, to create this, you know, this reality for us. And people are tired, and people are angry, and people are fed up. Yeah, I mean, people are going to be angry and fed up 
until the cows come home. My thing is, is that we need to have a mental space to where we can have this interaction. And it's one of the reasons why we're sharing this experience uh, on this platform. But again, continuing marching, continuing praying together, all these things are just to me lip service. I'm more blunt when it comes to this. Until we have power to stop what's happening, it's gonna to continue to happen. We need to have spaces to where we can love each other, where we can push each other up, show each other that we care, build our community. And that's how me personally, I would deal with the situation and what I, what, what would you think? And if we're powerless or we feel powerless, then these things will continue to happen. So. So yeah, this is just our check in. I know this is a very fun topic and it's uncomfortable for so many reasons, but uncomfortable conversations are needed to be had in order for um, these kind of things, you know, to be addressed. Um, one thing that we're doing tomorrow, I mean, cause I texted a group of, you know, some of my close friends and just to check on them. I'm like, how are you guys doing? And we decided, man, we need to talk. Like we need to just, you know, let it all out. Like we need a space to just express what we're feeling so check check on yourself you know check on your friends and we don't always need this to happen on national on a national scale for us to check in with ourselves because as i said we deal with racial profiling, we deal with um, racial in, uh, inequality and injustice on a daily basis, if we're gonna be honest with ourselves. Um, and if you've not had, if you're a black person or a brown person, minority, you've never had that experience, well, kudos to you, you're living the best life and I'm happy for you. But that isn't the case for the majority of us, the majority of um, minority in America, so. Let's have this conversation. Let's have these tough conversations. Yeah, let's find solutions. Let's have well, these. All about let's have solutions. these conversations because That's true. Let's, let's, find let's, solutions. let's have these let's... conversations. Then what? Let's have solutions. We have the conversations. Great. How are we going to get out of the situation we're in? We can't ask people for handouts. We can't ask people to understand. We can't ask people to pray for us to stand by us because that's what we've been doing for centuries. So what has been happening? We're still getting murdered in the streets by people that are we pay taxes for to protect us. Doesn't mean that all cops are bad. Yeah, no. It means that it doesn't mean that all if cops are you bad, yeah. are a largely a minority in this country, you're going to be profiled, and especially if you're black or brown. We have to be okay with saying those things, saying those things. Black and brown people are getting murdered by people that are supposed to protect and serve. How are we gonna come up with these solutions? Have power in yourself, have power in your community, be the nucleus in your community, check up on each other, have spaces like we have uh, now and spaces like we'll have tomorrow to check up on people. If you're the strong person in your group, still have people check up on you. Yeah because you can't be the strong person all the time. You have to have an outlet. So that's all I got to say. Well, thank you guys um, for tuning in and we will come back with something else. <laughs> all right, peace. Take care, be safe.